Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, in between playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, uh, I am finally getting around to doing my delve uh, or delving guide that I do each league, just as an update. Um, so, yeah, we're pretty much just going to cover off, answer a bunch of questions like changes to delve in 3.17, uh, market biomes, anything else that you need to be aware of, and then I'll run you through how to actually, uh, you know, basically find fractured walls. Uh, and I'll link you to a video that I did on how to kill the Crystal King, um, because it's literally one of the easiest fights in the game, and uh, there's a couple of things worth uh, worth looking out for while in Delve as well. Um, but anyway, let's get into this guide, and uh, let's talk about how you can make exalts or uh, currency in Delve, and the proof that I've got like 1,364 chaos just chilling from selling fossils. As you can see, I have been doing exactly that. And uh, we'll talk about that very shortly anyway. So uh, let's get into the uh, video. Okay, so I guess the first thing that we need to understand is why farm fossils in the first place. Well, I, I guess off the back of the changes that were made in the 3.17 league with the Atlas, and I'll talk about the Atlas setup next, um, we should probably look at the market and pricing at the current point in the league. Now we're about, I think, what, uh, about a month and a half into the league. So we're about halfway into the league. Um, and what you can see here, and this has been relatively consistent throughout the league, if we have a look at the trend parameters here, is that basically fossils have went up in price. And nobody's farming fossils because everybody's too busy farming expedition or other content or five ways. So nobody's really hammering the shit out of Delve except for the upper tier players that know that the deeper you go in Delve, you can sell in high volumes. Like you'll get shuttering drops of up to five fossils which is 25 chaos node um if you go to any magma fishes you're looking at 79 chaos glyphics have went up hugely because they're such a useful fossil to have a corrupted essence mod so you can craft your you know your minion helms or your chest pieces or your you know anything else that you want um and these sprout up constantly in in biome nodes all throughout delve even from about delve 200 to 300 it's really easy to get to to farm this now the other thing that we need to look at is resonators which are another thing that are selling crazily so you're going to run into resonator tro resonator troves constantly throughout delve they're worth 40 chaos each resonator troves will guaranteed give you a prime chaotic resonator and you start accessing troves from about 150 170 uh, in depth and basically, you're just going to constantly farm these. Not to mention, you're going to consistently farm resonators, especially at the lower levels. You're going to have high access to resonator drops. And each resonator you get, you might get a stack of like four or three. You're looking at two to three chaos a piece right now. And even for prime chaotics, which are the most commonly common to drop, which is single socket, you're looking at one uh, at two chaos a piece just for those. And that's simply because there's a restricted market. Nobody's playing this content. And this is literally at this stage, yeah, you know, and arguably has always been one of the best ways to craft in the game. You might be asking, like, oh, but what about the fossil drops that you get from doing the actual uh, league content? Well, you're only looking at these low tier fossils, you know, probably up to jagged, that sell for nothing because they're so accessible. But all of these higher echelon fossils, higher tier and higher level fossils, don't actually drop from those bosses that you're doing in Archnem. So. Basically, you know, you get perfect fossils, bound fossils, you'll guarantee sell straight away because, you know, the minion builds are the most commonly played builds in the league. Um, if we have a look at minion builds, 14% of all players are playing necromancers and they're going to want to target, um, you know, summoner helms and things like that, bone helms, uh, elder bone helms. So you're basically going to have a guaranteed sell on bound fossils for that uh, and you need a resonator to use a fossil. So that's the logic. But that's the market, um, and that's pretty much why Delve is such a great piece of league content to play to generate currency. That's my sell as to how you make exalts with it, but let's talk about how you easily sustain it um, and what you need to do to do that. Okay, so sustaining Delve can be done... Bloody in-game sound. Sustaining Delve can be done a couple of ways. You can do rotations, um, but with the way that the new Atlas tree is, I just don't even see the point in doing that. Fundamentally, um, when you're doing your quests, and we'll just go back to the um, to the hideout to show you exactly what you're going to do to sustain your Delve um, when we get into it. 
All right, so we're going to be after sulfite, and you can do that via just doing your sulfite missions, and you accrue these really quickly now. The other alternative is by doing it via the um, scarab method, which, you know, you can get sulfite scarabs. You might be like, well, how much are sulfite scarabs? Well, the beauty of this league, because of the accessibility of this league to, um, to scarabs, gold scarabs, which give you 60% more sulfite per map, are going to give you, you know, are, are going to be going out the door for two chaos apiece. And because people farm the shit out of Blight League, you're going to be able to find these in abundance. I've had no issues with these. And quite frankly, even with polished scarabs, maybe seven maps and I'm back to, you know, 50,000 sulfite. The other thing that's empowering all of this is the fact that the new Atlas trees that are set up, and if we have a look at the Delve nodes, we can see here the Delve nodes. So the new Atlas trees that have been set up are just insane. So like, I'm actually targeting Breach and Delve at the moment for mapping. And as long as you target these four key cluster nodes, you know, even starting out from the entry point, you know, 4% increased uh, a chance to meet Nico, get Nico missions. Um, that's pretty good. That's why I've got so many. Um, and then, you know, areas contain increased sulfite. Pretty much every single map I'm doing and getting elevated sulfite. The other thing is here, like 1% maximum elemental resist, you actually get buffs for and movement speed for doing maps with sulfite, um, which is another added advantage. And then just the additional mission stacking that you get here, an increased sulfite quantity, you know, double, a chance for double sulfite. Um, and then we come up here, we get these nodes up here, and you know, sulfite veins of all, you know, you also get azurite from doing sulfite, you know, 10% chance to get the equivalent azurite. So it's gonna build your azurite deposit up, which means you, know, you can upgrade really quickly when you're actually going down. Um, and then finally, the last one up here, which is Sulfite and Fusion, but just doing a map, a red tier map or a yellow tier map, you get 350 additional uh, Voltaxic Sulfite or 500 additional Voltaxic Sulfite. So you pretty much just get Sulfite for doing everything in the game. You don't even have to be targeting to get Sulfite, you'll get 500 per red map. It makes it one of the most sustainable pieces of League content in the game. And quite frankly, it's insane that nobody or the large quantity of people aren't playing it though i know a lot of people don't like delve i love delve because it's so relaxing and consistent and the further you down you go the better off you are there are other added adventure adventure advantages of doing delve such as crystal king farming farming putumba rings um which uh are basically rings that you can get um you can trade three of di three different variants to get a better ring and you can sell for one x a piece um, if you're farming all's uprisings from the Crystal King, you can sell these for like 8x. Um, you can do the uh, Val Architect or the Architect within Delve. Um, and there's a chance to drop a Doriani Machinarium, which are selling for like 2.8 Exalt. So there's a lot of ways to make currency, even beyond just getting fossils. Not to men mention opulent chests and cities. The ability to, to basically farm cities and get you know stacks of uh of awakened sextants which sell for you know we're talking about like three four chaos each and you know these drop in high high quantities um you can basically offload those on the market for a stack of 10 will get you 40 chaos so there's no excuse why you can't generate currency from this method there's a lot of other videos out there with other methods to generate currency for any beginner player or newer player my general general gist of of what to do when you want to generate currency go down and learn how to play delve and follow one of these videos like exactly this one that i'm making now um, and i'll explain basically how to do that but there's a lot of advantages that come from playing delve and that's probably what i say as far as you know the actual market pricing league mechanic and everything like that um, and i guess that's the atlas there that you know the reason why Delve is sustainable, um, you know, it, everything sort of lined up this league. And I don't see them nerfing it in future leagues because the abundance of players aren't playing Delve. Um, but the players that are, are just profiting. Now, as you further progress down Delve, um, and probably sitting about two 300 is a good sweet spot, you will get access to higher quantity fossil and resonator drops, and you'll just be able to offload those on the market and make pure back. Um, so, you know, very easy. But yeah, anyway, that's basically the market, the pricing, um, the Atlas, and the reason why Delve is such a good mechanic to get into. So I guess we'll talk about biomes next and, uh, and what you need to know about that. Okay, so let's talk about biomes. 
So what are biomes? Biomes are the patches of colors that you see within the, the, uh, the Delve map here. So all of these represent different types of biomes. Petrified forest is a biome, uh, fungal caverns is a biome, so on, so on. And as you'll notice, they all have modifiers, um, like, you know, monsters have increased area of effect. Now, it's very important to make sure that you're not doing biomes or, or if you're dying in Delve, the reason why is you're probably doing a biome that's too hard. In particular, if you're going to farm things like Crystal King, you need to be aware of if there's different biomes that don't work and meld well with your character. As you'll see, I'm at like depth 543 right now. So I've pushed pretty far and I'm going to keep going until like 800. Now, the importance of understanding biomes is also an understanding what can drop within the actual biomes, let alone just the rarity and things like that. Because when you're farming fractured walls and whatever, you know, yes, you can get certain levels of different things. But, um, and there are things that you should be aware of, but, uh, you know, there are different biomes that drop different types of fossils. And that's where we actually come to POBDB, and I'll put the link in the description for this, where we actually look at exactly that. So if we look at like fungal caverns, for example, that biome, you'll notice that there's a higher probability of dense, aberrant, perfect, corroded and gilded fossils. What this means, and the same with petrified bound fossils, um, abyssal depths, gilded and bound and aberrant, um, frozen hollow, sanctified, uh, which is one that we want to target. Um, and yeah, the, the, and these are the basic fossils that can drop. Now you can have faceted, glyphic, abyssal fossils, um, things like that, that can also drop, but they don't necessarily drop within those biomes. They drop on specific nodes. So for example, a time lost cavern, uh, fossil node will actually specifically drop a glyphic fossil and we'll do this node. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So magma cavity um, or magma chamber can drop faceted um, fossils, which drop, which sell for like, I think 79 chaos or whatever it is, or 39 chaos. Um, but they have a boss that's incredibly hard. Same with um, <coughs> magma cavity up there as well. So there's different ways to target, oh, sorry, magma fissure. Um, can drop faster, but there's different ways to target the different content that you want in Delve. It's not erroneously um, random. You just have to pay attention. Now, I won't go into the detail of the individual nodes um, because that's just sort of asking for complexity in this guide. This is just a sort of cover off. But if there's anything that you should understand is if I was to go to Petrified Forest, I would go back to my guide here and I'll go, okay, the fossils that I'm going to find in Petrified Forests are going to be bound, corroded, and sanctified. These are the ones that I'd want to sell because these are going to sell for the most. So bound, I think, are about 6 chaos, sanct are 7, and corroded are like 5. And they're going to drop in stacked quantities based on the, uh, based on the fossil uh, deposits that you find. So these are the things that you should consider when you're going through Delve. Don't just travel through Delve and go, I'll just go willy-nilly random through but actually consider your pathing as you go down. Now, I'm going through abyssal depths here. This is not the best sort of pathing to go, and you will find barren nodes. Generally, I try and avoid magma fissure because they have literally the worst drops and you get a lot of scorched fossils. The same with frozen hollow sends, tends to be a bit of a shit show. I, um, I tend to focus on petrified forest and fungal caverns, which are the brown nodes here. Uh, and fungal will be these sort of, um, I guess, what color is that? Purplish, brownish, gray. Um, I'll focus on these two because I'm generally going after bound, corroded, and sanct and perfect fossils uh, when I am farming fossils. But if you can hit any fossil nodes, absolutely hit them and you're going to make profit out of them. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you should know about biomes. I'll put the link to this uh, to this. Um, POB or POEDB page in the description. It's just really good information to be aware of. Um, not a lot of guides sort of cover off on this really quickly and briefly and easily. I guess I've explained this a few leagues over now, so I'm sort of used to it, but that's one thing you should understand. The other thing is obviously doubling back to just make sure the modifiers you're doing aren't too crazy for your build. If you're dying in Delve, it's generally because of the modifiers and look at it as the same sort of premise as any other map that you would go through. As you can see, they're all different. Um, generally cold on hit or anything like that, uh, or you know, you can get like three, 400% crit nodes. 
that's why you're going to die in a biome or, or a, in, in a delve column run um, as opposed to delve just being natively hard um, but yeah that's pretty much what you should understand about biomes so this one's a question that i get every single league what do you prioritize when you're upgrading now, as you go down you'll pick up so you use sulfite to uh, basically get into delve and sustain delve but when you're in delve you have to use azurite to which are the blue nodes um these that you'll see here azurite cavities and whatnot um these are the nodes that provide a resource called azurite now as you can see i got quite a bit um but what does this do well this gives you upgrades now the biggest thing that you should be aware of is generally the first thing I do is I upgrade my sulfite capacity, um, I upgrade my darkness resist, and I upgrade my light radius. I'm not co too concerned about maximum flares duration radius or anything like that straight away. I usually put like, I do like two or three upgrades into my capacity so I can sustain it longer. And then I put it into my resistance. That means that I don't take any... That means that when I go into the darkness within Delve, I take significantly less damage. Um, and that makes it a hell of a lot easier to actually Delve and sustain it. And then Light Radius is going to be the Light Radius from your cart, your Delve cart, and also within the nodes. So the bigger the Light Radius, the less risk you got of running into the darkness. And if you've already got low darkness resist, you won't die as much. So these are the three things that you should max out straight away. Second to that is start leveling up and getting more flares and flare radius and duration first. So flare radius and duration, um, and then start looking at increasing the number of flares that you have. You'll start with about three. Um, and so what I'll do is probably get it up to five, increase the radius, increase the duration. This is going to stop you from getting caught out when you're actually going and checking walls and things like that. Because the reason why we do this, we max out these early, is because we're going to use flares to face check walls and uh, and basically run the, uh, I guess, the delve columns, as I like to call them, or the delve paths. Lastly, you're going to upgrade dynamite. Now, dynamite has more functions than just blowing up fractured walls. For instance, if you're going to take on bosses within delve, you can use dynamite to kill bosses and it makes sense to always upgrade your dynamite to max out as you can see mine's completely maxed out the other thing that i use dynamite for is if you do get stuck into a bad position in a lost city or something like that or a relic city or whatever uh, you can use it to dislodge yourself and kill enemies around you um, and it's really good for that as well or even as you're running through and you get stuck and they sort of corral you into a wall that you can't get out of you can use that to dislodge you as well so dynamite is actually sort of like an active skill and it does a huge sum of damage especially when you're taking down bosses so don't just seat it there and go oh bugger it i only need it to blow walls up it actually serves a double purpose and helps you kill enemies as well and bosses within delve so absolutely use it it's just going to give you that little bit more sort of meat on the bone to level up and see i can level this up further and this means nothing now um and once it gets to 150 percent that's it um but yeah that's pretty much the um I, I guess what you need to know about doubling up uh leveling up your voltaxic generator um uh, before you start delving all right so after you've done all of that you're set up you've got some upgrades in the in the pipe you're ready to pretty much go down and delve now a lot of people are like yep yeah, you can push down lower but my character in particular is a bit of a ridiculous character so i play an rf uh, inquisitor I have like stupid amounts of regeneration or resistances, max, max block, everything, right? A lot of what you'll find in sustaining delve and running columns is that you'll need to build a character that has huge amounts of armor. You're not going to be so, and max resistances and overcap resistances, you're not going to be so focused on building a character that does huge amounts of damage. That used to be a thing, zero DPS, but then they put flicker spiders in delve and now it's impossible to do that. You will just get one shot. So... Yeah, most characters running deep delve now are just absolute meat bags. But anyway, let's let's go down to maybe delve 400, uh, which is a nice, comfortable level of delve. Now, if you're sort of new to delve, 250 to 300 is perfectly fine. Um, and we'll just talk about what you need to do as far as I guess face checking walls. So 411, let's go here. So we'll just go to this bio through this biome node here, and I'll show you exactly what to do. And we'll just talk it through while we're on screen. So activate ability. So We've went to our node, we're sort of here. Now we're gonna to go to here. Now, generally with Delve, you wanna focus on the longest possible columns and straight columns or even ones that sort of move like this are really good. And we might go down and do this one second. 
Um, and then basically we're just going to be face checking constantly. Now where the path diverges, we, you always will want to walk in the opposite direction because that's generally where you're going to find something. But I'll show you what I, what I mean. So we'll start the column. So this thing will own, the minecart will only go as fast as you go. And so if you run forwards, it'll catch up to you. But see where we get to like an impasse here. And I'll just turn the audio down in game so it doesn't distract. So it'll go up here. Now I'm going to want to go in the opposite direction. Because the darkness, there's nothing out, nothing here, right? So, you know, there could be a fractured wall or something like that. So then I'll run back to the minecart. And so you'll see it moves forward. And it'll stop a little bit up there. See? So then there's an opening here. So I want to go and check it. So what's down here? I drop a flare. I might move around. Now, this looks like it connects to another cavity. So we don't want to go too far. And you'll see the minecarts caught up. So then we just run back around to the minecart. And the minecart's sort of done a bit of a Johnny Roger here on me. And some of these cavities can be really interlinked. Which can be a real bastard sometimes. So here, minecart's going that direction. But I want to go this direction. Because there's an opening. Now, see, we've got a lost, lost loot chest there. So, you know, that's part of how we do this. And the reason why we need a tanky character is because we don't want to have to worry about taking damage. So, or, or having to do technical moves or anything. So, minecart's going up in this direction, right? You can see it on the map, and I'm looking at this constantly. So, I actually want to go and check down these two columns to see what's down here, because there could be anything down here. So, lost armaments, so nothing really there. Um, so, we'll go back. We'll go to this area. We'll see what's down here. And there we go, corroded fossils. And pretty much this is all you need to know. So with that, we just made five chaos, right? So that's pretty much all you need to know about looking for, for fractured walls. So we'll keep going through this column. So see how it's going straight up here? We don't want to do that. We want to go down the paths that it's not traveling down because we know it's a straight column. So there's got to be something down these paths. Now, here we go. Fractured wall. Bam. Cut, took a little bit of damage there. So then you're going to want to throw a flare at the fractured wall, throw a piece of dynamite, and then a flare into the room. And we just made another 15 chaos. So in the, in the few seconds, we just made 20 chaos, right? Um, so we'll go back out. And don't feel like the cart's running away from you. If you've got your, max, if you've got your resist maxed out, you're, all, you're okay. And then so we'll check this. We've got another two chaos. So then we'll come back down. We'll catch up with the mine cart. We'll follow it down. And then the path will either diverge again. And so see it's going this way. But we can see up here that we need to go up this way. Because there could be something up here. So lost wealth again. So we just made a little more currency. We go a bit deep in. Now the part where you stop going too far is when you realize that there's a connection somewhere. And you need to get back to your minecart before you die. So here the minecart will go a bit above. But we notice that it's not going this way. So there could be something down here. So another lost wealth, more currency. So then we run it back to the minecart. And then we get to the uh, the node. So we'll clear this node and then I'll show you the, the longer column. So don't worry too much about using flares. Even if you have to go back constantly to resustain flares, that's fine. Because it's better to use your flares and collect everything that you possibly can than not use your flares and collect nothing. Now... You might be asking like, oh, what about darkness running and things like that? Yep, you can actually run back down the way that you've went and do all that sort of rigmarole. But this has always been my much faster and more efficient method and a lot less frustrating. And this is why a lot of people get frustrated with Delve because they think they have to do, you know, darkness farming or whatever. Literally, if you play like this, you'll be able to play Delve very, very easily. So we'll go down and we'll run this Delve column. We can do this with eight flares because eight flares should be enough. So we'll just follow the minecart down. There's no, and there's no race in doing this content. Like you're going to make shitloads of XP. You're going to make shitloads of currency because you're really looking for quality, not quantity. So we'll come down to this crossroads here. We'll wait to see where it goes. So it's going down this way. So we know there's two paths that diverge out here. So we'll go down here. Lost armor, nothing. And then we might go down here. There's a link there. So we'll just go back up. We don't want it to run too far ahead over here. We're always keeping an eye on the minecart. And so we'll go up the other direction. Drop a flare. Aberrant fossil. It's worth nothing, but it's a fossil nonetheless. It could have been anything. We don't know. So then we'll come back down, run back to the minecart. 
We'll leave this shaft here. Actually, we'll go in because there might be something. There isn't though. So then we'll come back down. It's going down to the, the right. So we're going to go to the left. So armor, we don't need that. And generally where you start to see it go deeper and deeper on a single line, it'll, it'll grow further and further. So another 15 chaos, we've made what? 50 chaos, something like that, 40 chaos. We've already made currency in the bank. We'll sell those in no time. We'll get back and sell them in bulk. So we run back up. And see, you always just want to check the edges. You don't, just don't know what's going to be there. It's sort of like loot box scenario. You just got no idea. So then we'll make it to the node. So this one's always bad because it's a high physical DPS node. Yeah, I'm pretty tanky. All right. Jeweler's Boon. So that's pretty much how to find fractured balls and how to delve. At least that's my strategy. Now, there's other things that you can do. Um, if you wanted to, if you got to a certain level and you couldn't push any further right, and you knew that, you can actually horizontally delve. And you'll see at some point I actually did do that. Uh, not before 400, I got to like 300. You'll see that I actually just went horizontal because I was looking for Crystal Kings. Um, and there's nothing wrong with doing this strategy as well. You, if you follow the same strat, if that's the level that you can competently delve at, then by all means, horizontally delving is definitely a strategy you can apply. If you get to like delve 250 and you feel like, okay, that's going to work for you and you're getting enough out of uh, delving at 250, it's going to be less on the Azurite cost or the Sulfite cost, sorry. And, uh, it's going to be more sustainable and you're still going to make a shit ton of currency out of it. The deeper you go, the more profitable it's going to get, but also the higher risk and the better the character you need to be able to go deeper. That's pretty much how Delve works. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll, I'll guess I'll go into the last part, which is just a quick summary. All right, so I guess this video has been relatively short and, uh, and I've sort of stepped you through step by step. Biggest things to note is just be aware of how your Atlas setup is configured. Uh, the Atlas is really easy to configure for, del uh, for delving. Um, sustaining it, again, just uh, Sulfite Scarabs, Dirt Cheap, two Chaos for Gold Scarabs. Make sure you run your uh, Nico missions on your map modifiers as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you'll be able to sustain it, no sweat. Um, market and pricing, really profitable this league, even at this current point in time, nobody's really delving, so get in before everybody else figures it out, um, maybe by, you know, the two month mark, you know, things will drop off, but people are still crafting armor and people are still going crazy about it, Delve's actually been profitable for the entire league, I just didn't do this video earlier, not because of that, but because I had a lot of other stuff going on, um, biomes, link in the description, be aware, just make sure you're going down biomes that have the best profitability rating and also target farm the fossils you want. Um, if you want more info, then please post up in the description and I'll, I'll provide. Um, and then fractured walls. If you follow my strategy, it's really easy. Um, you won't die often. Just run a tanky character. Characters you can run Vortex, uh, Max Block Vortex, Max Block Molten Strike. Uh, you probably get to Delve 500, but that'll, that'll cap out. Um, you can run RF, which in this case is what I'm running, and I'm moving down to 600 to 800. Um, and then outside of that, uh, learn how to beat the Crystal King. It's one of the most profitable fights. Pardon me. Every time I make videos, my, itch, my nose itches. Um, it's by far one of the most profitable fights in the game. And I'll actually put a, a link in the description to my guide that I did on how to take down all as well. And uh, hopefully that'll help you get there. Now, once you've, uh, once you've sold all your currency, generally what I do is just stash it all in Delve. I'll price check it. Um, in this case, these have probably dropped down a little bit. Yeah, so put it for 39. And then I'll just sell it in, in bulk quantities. So, you know, you're looking at just my bound fossils. I've got 61 chaos worth of bound fossils. You know, um, we've got perfect fossils, which sell for six each. Um, corroded, we can sell for five each, which we just picked up. Um, and yeah, basically the money will come. Um, or the 
chaos will come. And then all I really do then is just sell large, large, large quantities of, um, of fossils to chaos and then convert the chaos into exalts and Bob's your uncle. Simplest and most consistent way to level up any build or whatever. Um, it'll get you, you know, the initial um, exalts you need to farm and, and basically get your character working, uh, even at lower levels. And then you can push down further. You can invest to push down further or you can be happy with the status quo and leave it at there. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much else because otherwise this video is going to be too long but uh yeah uh like and sub if this video helps you generate exalts um and uh if you've got any questions post post up in the description but uh until next time have a good one and uh bye